Mackenzie Wark, The Beach Beneath the Street, The Everyday Life and Glorious Times of the Situationist International. Dive into the captivating world of the Situationists, a group of writers and artists who thrived during the 1950s and 60s. In this book summary, you'll learn about their absurd lifestyle, their dogma of no dogma, and their steadfast commitment to never working. Discover how they combined elements of various art and philosophical movements and how their almost indescribable ideology has inspired generations of artists, filmmakers, musicians, and political agitators. Get a glimpse of the Situationist's conception of art, which is deeply intertwined with play, social interactions, and subjective truths, as well as their novel methods such as determinant, the deft appropriation of someone else's work to illuminate the society that created it. The Situationists' Absurd Revolution the Situationists, a group of artists and writers from the 1950s and 60s, rejected any movement and sought to change the world through tactical mobility. Rejecting any classification, they combined various ideologies to make art, films, and stage situations. Despite their commitment to never work, they published manifestos and essays and inflamed social unrest. Their unique ideology, which inspired later artists and political agitators, was born out of a Warholian sense of the value of deadpan and nihilism, yet they were funny and deadly serious. How Boredom Sparked a Movement A tale of how the letterists, a collective of artists and writers, and their successors, the Situationists, were born out of boredom and a rejection of conventional culture. These groups of bohemians in post-war France, centered around the Saint-Germain neighborhood in Paris, worked little and drank much. The letterists were founded by Romanian poet Isidore Isu, who believed that creating was the most sublime activity and that art searches for subjective truth. Their discussions revolved around their hypocrisy and folly of conventional culture. The Situationists, their successors, were born from the Letterist International and followed a similar path of rejection of bourgeois life. The story also features dancer, artist, and femme fatale Valerie Myers, who despite having no money, became a cultural icon of the time and even gave rock and roll poet Patti Smith her first tattoo in the 1970s. In summary, this is a story of how simple boredom can trigger a movement, and how the rejection of conventional culture and norms can give way to artistic and cultural expression. The Art of Leisure Guy Debord believed that leisure was more than just consumption of entertainment and material goods, it could be a tool for artistic and political expression. He rejected the traditional notion of work as a means to leisure and instead sought a life of leisure as a means to freedom. As a key figure in the Situationist movement, he focused on how situations could be remembered and documented, and then recreated to cause social or artistic chaos. He surrounded himself with like-minded, alcoholic intellectuals of the non-working classes, who prioritized leisure and creative conversation over work. His famous public graffiti of Never Work was a rallying cry for situationist thought and methods. Alexander Trocki, another situationist writer, echoed Debord's ideas on the artistic life of non action with his advice to aspiring writers to dedicate a year to pinball. Overall, the shift from the letterists to the situationists was driven by Debord's vision of using leisure as a tool for artistic expression and political subversion. Repurposing Culture the letterists introduced Determinant, an act of taking someone else's work and repurposing it to illuminate the work's aspects and society. Appropriation, or hijacking, cultural artifacts, drove this creativity that still exists today, as seen in mashup songs. The letterists and situationists saw the world as objects, habits, and situations that they could hijack and redefine. In 1956, Debord co-wrote A User's Guide to Determinant, calling for controlling and repurposing conventional, bourgeois symbols. Determinant became a way to challenge mainstream culture while promoting subversive, creative expression. B Buzz In 2009, Australian scientists found that cocaine made bees more enthusiastic about finding nectar. While the scientists held the drug securely, situationists saw the experiment as an absurd search for meaningless truths. 
They believed in the subjective truth art reveals and that the art of determent required a public sphere. Danish painter and social theorist Esker Jorn collaborated with de Borde and believed that thinking up an artistic project was as good as making it. Both saw humanity as essentially free, expressed by fulfilled desire, and if you act on that desire, you are free. The Rise and Fall of the Situationist International In 1957, the Situationist International was founded by nine members from three groups, promoting their vision of a city of play, love, and adventure. The organization, headed by Guy Debord, aimed to organize exhibitions, provocations, occasional publications, and the International Situationist Journal. The founding marked the end of de Borde's belief that the letterists would follow his every desire. Initially, the International had only 72 members, and it dissolved 15 years later. The first conference happened in Cozio di Arashia, where a founding member's family owned a hotel. Despite de Borde's promulgation of this launch version, these few facts, in true Situationist style, might not be accurate. International Situationist was a work of art itself, exquisitely designed, creatively illustrated, and bound in hardcover. The journal prophesied today's copyright abrogating art, writing, and music by declaring in its first volume that its contents were usable by everyone, even without acknowledgement, you can make all the determinants that appear useful to you. The Situationist International envisioned creating a city that might finally justify the conceit that this civilization is worthy of its ancestors, filled with new passions and adventures. However, the man who tried to avoid work soon drowned himself in it. The Hardline of Guy Debord Guy Debord, founder of the Situationist International, had a zero-tolerance policy for members who did not align with his vision. Debord valued individual worth over brotherhood, and believed that no problem could be resolved by goodwill alone. While the group never recruited members or had a set philosophy, they adhered to a doctrine of no doctrine. De Borde saw each member's actions as a reflection of their worth, and expelled members who did not meet his high standards. The Situationist International was not for the faint of heart, requiring sacrifice and a commitment to De Borde's vision. The Art of Giving the Situationists, a group of avant-garde intellectuals in the 1950s, practiced the Pacific Northwest Native American custom of potlatch as a living act of art. In potlatch, the giver builds a reputation by giving away possessions, including expensive Situationist journals, without expecting reciprocity. Giving is the central question of today, and the practice of potlatch requires generosity and dexterity. Recipients must not reciprocate as that cancels the power of the original gift. The giver and receiver pay no heed to the item's value, as it is not currency. Although Potlatch eventually ran its course within the Situationist group, the time and gifts they gave to each other in the world were their most important gifts, given without thought of profit or salary. The May 1968 Uprising The May 1968 Uprising, which started as a protest by enrages at a French university, quickly escalated into a national strike. Workers joined the students, and barricades were erected in the streets. The Situationists, who advocated for the denouncement of art and disinterment of Cardinal Richelieu, became involved and had a significant role in the movement. They set up their own convocation, printed materials, and requisitioned money, cars, food, and alcohol. Although the movement eventually ran out of momentum, the Situationist's legacy lives on in the idea to expect surprises in art, politics, and history and the importance of ruthless criticism of all that exists. The Situationists left a mark on the world with their unorthodox approach to art and life. Their doctrine of no doctrine and their quest for living as fully as possible, constantly criticizing everything that exists has shaped contemporary perceptions of art, society, and politics. From the concept of determent to the power of gift-giving through the potlatch practice, they explored various facets of human expression and creativity. The essence of their movement is encapsulated in the principle of always expecting surprises. As you consider the various expressions of the Situationist International and the impact they've made, remember to embrace the element of surprise and exploration in your own life and creations.